Ryan here, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get Eclipse in the Java uh, programming language up and running on a Mac. So specifically, we are going to download the Java development kit. We're going to download the Eclipse Integrated Development Environment, IDE for short, and then we're going to go ahead and create our first simple program in Eclipse. So we'll do that as quickly as possible. So the first thing that you are going to need to do anything in Java is you're actually going to need the Java development kit. Okay, so what I'd recommend doing is go ahead and, and open up your spotlight. So if you want to just click up in the corner on the little search icon and then search for a terminal. And then go ahead and open up your terminal. And you should be able to, basically if you do Java space dash version, this will tell you if you have Java installed. Okay, in my case you can see no Java runtime present requesting install. Now you may have some kind of something pop up that has a version, you know, Java 8 point something, point something, or 11 point something, or 13, whatever it is. Uh, and in that case you already have Java installed. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and, and go along this process with me to download the newest version, but if not, you, you're probably already in good shape. But I do want to emphasize that there is what's called the JRE, which stands for Java Runtime Environment. That's a piece of software that you need just to run uh, existing Java software, um, programs that have been built using Java. There's also the Java Development Kit. So the Java Development Kit includes that JRE, that Runtime Environment, but it also has all the extra tools needed to actually compile and write Java code. So just beware that if you have a Java dash version that, that came up to something with something, it, it's possible that you just have the runtime environment, not necessarily all the extra tools that you'll need to write and compile Java code. So you saw when I actually clicked or typed Java dash version and notice the space as well, and I uh, hit enter, it came up with this, hey, do you want to install Java? Go ahead and click the more info. And what that will do is it will actually take you to the oracle.com homepage. Now Oracle has basically been the, the gatekeepers of Java for a very long time. There are a lot of different versions of Java. You can actually go ahead and type in Java versions in Google and it will come up with a Wikipedia page here. And this is a really neat thing to look at because at any time, no matter when you're uh, doing this video in the future, you should be able to come look at this page and you'll basically be able to find the, the, uh, the latest versions. You can see here there are the LTS versions which stand for I believe long-term stable or long-term support in this case and then there's newer versions so you always want to go with typically you want to go with the latest LTS version even though in this case uh, version 13 is out and version 14 will be out soon maybe 15 16 17 by the time you watch this video you, you typically want to go with the, the latest long-term support version because it's just going to be more stable um, however, uh, it used to be that you could come here and what I would typically do is just go to download, here's the latest version, and then you could basically come down and you would say I accept, and Mac OS you'd basically find your version and download that DMG file. But what you'll see here is it actually wants me to log in with an Oracle account. Now I could create one, but it gets to be a little bit intrusive, it's asking me for my phone number and address and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and what's actually fairly new and true about Oracle is that they're kind of closing off of their 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 uh, JDK. So they're they're not really meant for for you and me the average developer. They're kind of meant more for the corporate world. Now they actually have open source versions of their their code. You can find what's called open JDK, but that's just the source code. So what you probably want to do if you don't want to necessarily have your all your information given to them um, as well as just be aware that this Oracle even if you do go ahead and do that and you download a version it's technically not for commercial usage unless you're paying them some some money so what I typically recommend doing is going out to Google and typing adopt open JDK okay and adopt open JDK what this is is this is pre-built versions of the Open JDK library, which again, Open JDK is coming from Oracle, so you're you're still getting uh, the good stuff, so to speak. Now, I, what I would just recommend a moment ago was to download the JDK 11, but I've actually just tested this, and for some reason, that's not working with Eclipse. So, JDK 8 has been out for quite some time. Um, and it is just kind of the, the old faithful, right? Old reliable. So what I'm actually going to recommend doing 
is go ahead and download the, the 8 version, LTS 8, and you can keep the hotspot open up there. Okay, so go ahead and download that. And then at the same time, you may want to open up a browser and type in Eclipse. Actually, what I'll first do is I'll type in Java IDE. And you'll see there are a lot of different options for our integrated development environments. Okay, and again, an IDE is basically something that allows you to write code and compile code. It's really just a program for, for writing your code and kind of giving you some nice highlighting and just makes programming a little bit easier. It doesn't actually compile your, compile your code. That's what this JDK is going to do for us. There's a lot of different options. Some of the top three are right here, Eclipse, NetBeans, and IntelliJ. IntelliJ is kind of the new one, the um, very popular. It, it kind of pushes you towards a paid version, though. NetBeans is the super old one. Eclipse is kind of in the middle. Um, I, I recommend Eclipse because it's free, and if you learn to write code in Java and Eclipse, then you can actually... Uh, kind of retool it to write C++ code or Python. So it's a really versatile um, and free integrated development environment. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just search for Eclipse. And we'll go and we will go to the downloads. Okay, and you should see, yeah, big orange download 64-bit version there. And this is going to figure out that you're on a Mac and it's going to download the Mac version. Okay, so you can see I'm downloading OpenJDK 8 and Eclipse. Now I have actually already installed or downloaded these uh, these files just to kind of speed this up. So I'll go ahead and cancel these two downloads. Okay, and minimize. Okay, so again I have these uh, two download files. So again, at this point, if I type in Java version, it's basically going to say, "Hey, nothing's there." So let's go ahead and, and run our OpenJDK 8. Go through the prompts. I will agree to those terms. Go ahead and put in your login credentials for your Mac and then hit close. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this command one more time, Java space dash version. And now you will in fact see OpenJDK version 1.8 open JDK runtime environment, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is good news. So now what I wanna do is over in my Eclipse download, go ahead and just double click that. That's going to create this installer. So you can go ahead and run the installer by double clicking it. And this should eventually run if we just kinda of click open. Okay, now this may take a little bit of time depending on how fast your computer is and whatnot. But essentially, this will install our, our Eclipse development environment, integrated development environment for us. So in my case, I'm going to just wait here for just a moment. And when this does finally get through, there it is, we are going to go ahead and select the Eclipse IDE for Java developers and go ahead and click install. Go ahead and accept that. You can see here it did find my adopt OpenJDK version back there, so that was good. You'll go ahead and just accept all the licenses while it installs. Okay, so I'll go ahead and trust these certificates. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and launch Eclipse. Should be in your launch pad now, hopefully. Guess it's not quite there yet. At least I don't see it. Okay, so anyway, when you launch Eclipse, uh, it's going to ask you to select a workspace. So pretty much wherever you want to put that on your computer is fine, but go ahead and click launch. Um, one thing I will say about Clips is it's not the lightest weight IDE out there. It's as you can already tell, it's it can be a little bit slow and clunky, clunky, especially loading up. But once you get it up and running, it usually you won't have any problems whatsoever. Okay, so once we get Eclipse up and running, you'll see here a few options 
uh, we'll go ahead and just create our Java project. So click create a Java project and let's give it a project name. So something like my first project. Okay, so you will see that it does have the uh, execution environment. So we'll just go ahead and keep that 1.8 selected and it did find our adopt open JDK 8. And so for the most part, I'm just gonna type in a project name and click finish. Okay, and that's going to uh, bring you to the package explorer over here with my first project. So go ahead and click to expand that little arrow. And in this source directory, this is where we're going to create our first class, our first Java class. So go ahead and right click on that source directory and then go hover over new and click on class. Okay, and then in the name, you're just going to want to do something like my first program. Okay, and the only other thing you want to make sure you do is click this public static void main. Okay, and then go ahead and just click finish. You don't need to click anything else or type in anything else. Okay, and this public static void main, this is basically what Java will look for uh, to know where to start running your code. If it finds this public static void main, then you'll go ahead and uh, this, 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 whatever you have in here will actually get executed. So let's go ahead and just do our first hello world. So system dot out dot print line and we will do two quotations and we will say hello world with Dr. Dan okay and then go ahead and save your file and you should be able to click this green play button okay and you'll see it all the way down here at the bottom hello world with Dr. Dan so congrats you just ran your first Java program um, if you want to run another program you can do that by essentially going back over here to your source directory and just right clicking new class. We'll just go through that same process and we'll say my second program. All right, and again, make sure you do public static void main. Click finish. Okay, um, and we'll do a system dot out dot print line. Congrats you're a pro now right you just written your second program make sure you include that semicolon at the end you're well on your way okay so i'm going to do a command s or apple s just save these files before you run them then go ahead and click the play button so congrats you're a pro now you should be able to switch back and forth between these two uh between these two programs by just clicking on the different clicking on the different uh, tabs up here and executing different programs. If for some reason you get you get lost or you um, you lose that console window and you hit play again, it'll basically uh, bring it back for you. Um, if for some reason the play button's not working, you can click this little black arrow and then do run as and Java application should usually uh, do the trick for you. Just select that particular program. Uh, this may happen sometimes your package explorer, you accidentally close it and you're trying to figure out how do I get it back? Well, the way that you do that is you just come up to here to Window for you, uh, your, your Eclipse menu and go to Window. And then you do Show View. And then you can find the Package Explorer. You can find the console, most of the items that you are looking for. If they're not here, then you can go to Other and you'll find it. OK, so there we have our Package Explorer. And that way I can look through all kinds of different, uh, all kinds of my code and my projects. Okay, so maybe at this point you're just starting with Eclipse and you're wondering where do I go from here? Um, what I would recommend is uh, going on to the internet. You can type in hello world with Dr. Dan GitHub. Okay, and if you go to my GitHub page for hello world with Dr. Dan, what you will find is a ton of code okay you will find basically everything you could ever want to know about programming and Java through eight modules each module has a number of lessons in it and I start from the beginning I assume you know nothing um, so you can actually come and see all the the code and if you if you really kind of take to self-study and you can basically read the comments in the code um, if you want uh, again, just everything from the basics through functions and storage, object-oriented programming from basic object-oriented programming to advanced object-oriented programming, how to uh, handle exceptions and, and file input and output, memory organization, basic data structures such as sets and maps, 
uh, and then further on to threads, GUIs, and APIs, making calls to third-party APIs like Yelp API, and on and on. Um, so all this source code is available for free to you to basically, if you want to teach yourself. If you do want some in-depth tutorials, you can basically go to hellodrdan.com where I have uh, hours and hours, 50, 60, 70 hours of video content uh, literally walking you through all of those uh, source code uh, files that I just showed you. So um, I teach with no step skip. So you can basically go through and and learn to program from scratch. Uh, basically, this is going to be an entire year's worth of content. It's going to take you from zero, knowing absolutely nothing, to being really a, a great programmer. So I encourage you to check out Hello World with Dr. It's really HelloDrDan.com. Hope to see you over there, and hopefully uh, this was a good tutorial to get you started with Java development on a Mac.